So now we know to find the work done by a force, we just have to use the, the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine, the angle between the force and the displacement. Now, if it is a one-dimensional case, that means uh, we can just use uh, the force times uh, the displacement is going to be delta x. And if we use uh, the signs to represent the direction, then we don't have to have the cosine, the angle between the two. Because uh, if the force and displacement, they are in the same direction, we would have cosine 0 degrees, which is positive 1. If they are in the same direction, they'll either be both positive or both negative. And naturally, we're going to get positive work. If they are in opposite directions, the angle between the two will be 180 degrees. So, and the cosine 180 is negative 1. If they are in opposite directions, it will be either one positive, one negative, or this one negative, that one positive. Either way, you're going to get a negative work done. So if we use the signs embedded in these quantities for the direction, then we don't have to have this cosine over here. Now this also tells us that if the force is a variable force, and I give you the force as a function of the position, say this is a force varies by position and uh, the graph look like that. If you're multiplying, that means uh, it's uh, which part of the graph? It is the area of the graph because uh, when you're multiplying, that's height times space. What we get is the area. So the area of the graph, the area between the graph and the zero line here, and here will give you the work done by this variable force. Now this part can be a little tricky. If your displacement is in the positive x direction, for example, it goes from x equals to 1 to 5, then the positive force will be in the same direction as the displacement, which means you get positive displacement. The area down here involves negative force, which means that the negative force is opposite to the displacement. So this area will give us negative work. So to find the total work done by this force, you just have to add the positive area here to the negative area. Of course, if your displacement is in the negative direction, for example, position goes from x equals to 5, to 1. Then will be the opposite. The, when the force is positive, it's in the opposite direction to the displacement, so you get negative work done. When the force is negative, you get the positive work done. So if you want to find the total work done by this force when the displacement is negative, then you just have to add this negative area to this part of the positive area. Now let's see if you remember this kinematics equation for constant acceleration motion, the one that has the v squared. What does v squared equal to? It equals to vo squared plus 2a times the displacement. Now because we just learned that force times displacement is the work done, here we have displacement, and I can turn this into force if I do f equals to ma turn this into m times a, which means uh, what I can do is uh, I can multiply this by the mass. But then I just want ma, so I get the force. I don't want to have the 2 over here. To get rid of the 2, I will have to multiply by 1 half. So if I do this, this one is going to become 1 half mv squared. That one, 1 half mvo squared. And uh, the 1 half and 2 cancel m times a times the displacement. Now this m times a is force, but it is not just any force. It is the net force. 
So this will be net force times the displacement, which means uh, this gives us the work done by the net force. So this thing here equals to that plus the work done. And work is energy, joules. If this term is uh, joules, then that means these two, they are also in joules, which means that there's some sort of energy. If a mass is moving, you have this kind of energy. So we call it a kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy, we use capital K, or you can write KE, that's uh, one half mv squared. This is the kinetic energy equation. Which means uh, over here, that since this is the final velocity, so this is the final kinetic energy. That's the initial velocity, so it's the initial kinetic energy. So final equals to initial plus the work done. And this basically tells us uh, energy is conserved. An object starts with a certain amount of kinetic energy, and then the net force does uh, this much work, which means gives that object this much energy. So in the end, the object gets uh, this total energy. However much it starts with, plus whatever it gets from the net force. Now if I subtract by initial kinetic energy on both sides, then I have final minus initial over there. That means that I get the change in kinetic energy it equals to that, the work done by the net force. Okay, this basically just means the conservation of energy. Same as this equation, it means conservation of energy. And we call this work energy theorem. Now let's try a couple of problems. The first one is, uh, if the work required to accelerate a car from rest to 40 miles per hour is W0, what is the work required to slow the car down from 40 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour? So we're looking for the work required or the work done by the net force. And according to the work energy theorem, this equals to the change in kinetic energy, which means it's the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. When it goes from rest to 40 miles per hour, the initial kinetic energy is uh, zero. The final kinetic energy is when it's uh, 40 miles per hour. So this is uh, one half m, the final velocity squared, where the final velocity is 40 miles per hour. And we know that this equals to W naught. Now what we want is the work required to go from 40 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour. Again, the work done by the net force is uh, the change in kinetic energy and that is the final minus the initial. This time, the final is the kinetic energy when the velocity is 20. The initial is the kinetic energy when it is 40. Now let's see, we already know the kinetic energy when it's at 40 miles per hour is W naught. So we just need to find the kinetic energy when the velocity is 20 miles per hour. So we can use proportion to find the kinetic energy at 20 miles per hour. So the kinetic energy equals to 1 half mv squared. The car's mass doesn't change. So the mass doesn't change. 1 half, of course, is a constant. So the kinetic energy is proportional to v squared. If the speed changes from 40 to 20, the speed becomes halved. And we have to square that. That means the kinetic energy changes by a factor of uh, one-fourth. So when the speed becomes halved, the kinetic energy becomes one-fourth. So the kinetic energy for 20 miles per hour equals to one-fourth W naught. The kinetic energy at 40 miles per hour is W naught. 
so the work required would be negative three fourths w naught. So this is the answer. And it makes sense for the answer to be negative because we're slowing the car down. We're taking energy away from the car. The car loses kinetic energy in this process. This is a graph problem. This graph over here shows the net force on a three kilogram object. This is the force on the three kilogram object. The net force acts along the x-axis. The object starts at the rest at the origin. So it's a one dimensional case. We want to find the work done on the object from x equals to zero to x equals to 10 meters. And in part B, we want to find the speed of the object when it gets to x equals to 10 meters. So this is a force versus position graph. That means uh, for part A, the work is uh, which part of the graph? The area of the graph. Whenever we're looking for the area of a graph, we're looking for the area between the graph and the, the zero line. So it's the area up there, the area here, and then of course there's no area over there. So we're looking for the area here, this area, and then there's no area right here. Okay, and the things we're going from x equals to 0 to x equals to 10, that means the displacement is in the positive x direction. So when the force is positive, we get positive work. When the force is negative, we get the negative work done. So let's see. The positive area here is a triangle, so it's one half height times the base. The height of this triangle is 6. The base of this triangle is uh, 5. And then the smaller triangle, it's 1 half height times the base. The height of this triangle is uh, negative 4. The base of the triangle goes from 5 to 7, so the base is 2. And then, of course, there's no area there. And this will give us uh, 15 minus 4. 11 joules. Now in part B, we want to find the speed of the object at the end when we already know the speed is zero at the beginning. So we can use the conservation of energy, the work energy theorem. So the work done by the net force equals to the change in kinetic energy of the object. And this is 11 we found earlier. And this equals to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Initially, it's at rest, so this is zero. So this is the final kinetic energy, one half m times the final velocity squared. So this is uh, one half, the mass is three kilograms. 11 equals to that. So we'll find the final speed is uh, 2.7 meters per second.